Okay, welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We are here live in person for a real event. It's a hybrid event, there's a live stream, a lot of action, there's two CUBE sets here, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Go to siliconangle.com, and of course, theCUBE.net to check all the coverage out, and Amazon's got their own live event site. Go check out all the action. We've got Stuart McGill here, CTO of MicroFocus, the company that was part of the big announcement involving the mainframe modernization that Adam Selepsky announced on stage on his first keynote as CEO, and under the covers is MicroFocus powering a lot of that functionality. Stuart, thanks for coming on theCUBE to break it down with me. Thanks, John. So Pleasure. what does the announcement mean that, that Adam gave the IBM, I mean, not the mainframe announcement, obviously my IBM, IBM's known for the mainframe, but he had the mainframe modernization program. What's that all about? Well, I think we'd like to think of this as the next evolution of the mainframe. For those customers that uh, have been running on the mainframe for 40 years, they've bet their business on it, where do they go next? Where does the future, what does the future hold? And this is all part of the announcement yesterday, is this is the journey that many, many customers are going to decide to go on. So talk about the relationship between AWS and MicroFocus. Obviously, um, I know AWS is talking about migration for the or they've been Oracle, and a lot of their customers have these mainframes that are in the classic data centers. Adam Selesky told me personally when I interviewed him that you know, the mainframe is part of that data center mindset that people are chipping away at now. They want to move them out, maybe keep some functionality, but for the most part, migrate it out eventually. This is where you guys are involved. Take us through why that's important. Well, I think it's the next, it's the level of agility that that's actually delivered. For many customers, they need to move a hell of a lot faster than they currently <laughs> are. Let's face it, the world is changing at pace. The applications that support these customers need to also change at pace. What AWS does is give this market a momentum, which is where do we go next? How, where do we take customers where workloads have been running their business, where, how are they going to run their business in five years' time, how are they going to run their business in 10? Well, congratulations on MicroFocus, big part of the announcement. Specifically explain to me MicroFocus's role in the announcement with AWS. What's the relationship? I think they're twofold. To, to call it out, actually, we've been working with AWS for many, many years. This isn't something that's radically new. We've been engaging with them for literally 10 years at least. But the key element is MicroFocus provides technology that's an enabler to facilitate AWS delivering the service, as well as a competency partner to help customers actually accelerate their journey to take advantage of it. So they're bundling MicroFocus into that capability. Is it software that you guys have? What's going on under the covers? I think it's software, it's capability, it's expertise. It's everything that a customer might need to help them get, be successful. Our, our job is to support AWS. It's AWS's job to make sure the customer is absolutely satisfied. All right, so give me an example. I'm a customer, I got a mainframe. I'm a bank, I've been using the mainframe and boy, it just squeaks in time to get my backup done before I turn on the lights in the morning. It's yeah. just working, it's humming, it's pumping on all cylinders. Uh, my COBOL programmer just quit. What do I do? How do you guys help me? Well, I think there are two, there are two reasons why you get nervous <laughs> a call. It's, uh, number one, you, know, you, you need to move your business at pace. So yeah. what's going to run your business going forward? So you need to understand your applications. Number two, the cost profile of your existing infrastructure is going to be incredibly expensive. So what you want to do is essentially make the change, accelerate the change, as delivered at a much lower cost. So it looks at the application, so the software says, okay, what's the app, and then does it create like a replica, a digital twin, I mean, I'm just trying to visualize. Like oh, I see what you mean. What, what, what happens? Because I got the mainframe, I know what that is. I've been dealing with that animal for a long time. What happens next? Is it containerized, is it an app replication? Uh, the customer determines how far they want to go. If they would like their mainframe application to run in the cloud exactly as is, so it supports their customers exactly as they expect today, we can do that. On the other hand, if they need to enhance that experience for their customers, if they need to take it into a completely different environment, if they do want to containerize, if they do want to take it into new levels of service, if they do want to leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning, then again, they can determine the journey. MicroFocus is there to essentially support them do that first step, which is get the applications ready to be delivered into cloud as fast as possible. Well, congratulations on the relationship. I guess I got to ask you the question, which on my mind is that, okay, is this death of the mainframe? Long live the mainframe? You know, the old expression. Are they, is mainframe dying or are they going to hang around for a while? I mean, the dinosaurs are out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this is, we like to position it more as an evolution. <laughs> we don't think the mainframe's going to die. There will be customers who want to stay there and we respect yeah. their choices. But on the other hand, 
this is a way to truly accelerate the, you know, the future of mainframe applications. You know, and I'll say, Stuart, I would talk to a lot of CISOs and CIOs, and they all t t tell me the same thing. When they move into the cloud, the white hot core is pretty much the mainframe or critical apps. They yep. get the edges first, move them to the cloud, and then they come in and they start chipping away at the main, the main core, and then slowly move it out, because they don't want to get in there and disrupt. So disruption's a huge concern. How does this new um, modernization trans, uh, uh, migration program for the mainframe ensure that disruption doesn't happen? What's, I'm sure that's on their mind. Well, I think what you're describing is what's the cutover, which is you're running on the mainframe yeah. today, you want to run on the mainframe tomorrow. <laughs> the, uh, you know, if that's the case, or do you want to run on the mainframe today and you want to run in the cloud tomorrow? Essentially, the cutover is the same. The, the process is fairly separate from the mainframe itself. You're obviously bringing applications off, we're getting them ready to go, tested, in, you know, uh, regulated, so it's been approved, security's all in place, and then essentially it's literally a switch cut. We literally have customers that turn off the mainframe and you know, they're already running in the cloud and then we even have some uh, that have photographs of them shipping the mainframe out the door. So I got to ask, is there a cutover party at that point? People, you know, Some champagne. people do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly true. Remember, their people are, are also going along for this journey. They're not, you know, it's a big moment for them. You know, I hate to sound old, today's my birthday, so I have to say this. Um, I remember when I was breaking into the business in my 20s, I never did, I never programmed on punch cards, but <laughs> I remember pointing at the mainframe guys and saying, those old relics, I guess that's what I would be today, but the young guns coming into the industry today, they want containers, they want microservices, they want cloud, you see what's going on here at AWS. I mean, some really cool stuff happening. Uh, they want to take advantage of all the cool stuff that is there, and every single announcement that's been made today, and yesterday, and the days ahead, all of those are great capabilities if you can get them into the core of your business. Yeah. And so the key is to actually take, take what's running your business today, enhance it, and improve it, and take it forward. Yeah, I think the, I think the key point, is great insight on your part about this cut over, because people know what that means. Yeah. It's a project plan. Yes. Cut it over, get it set up, and I think that's the hard part. How hard is that on the cloud side, in terms of staging? Can you share some timetables with me, just to kind of give me a feel for order of magnitude? I got a mainframe, assume it's pumping, it's an app I'm using, I really can't shut it down, but I want to cut it over, so how much time to prepare to get it to the cloud? Um, Roughly, just order of magnitude. Most customers, specific. they tend to phase these things. They're not trying to, if you're a really big bank, you are not going to do that overnight. Yeah. That isn't going to come as a big surprise. But what you're going to do is you're going to take it in chunks. And they're typically 12 to 15 months, which is the biggest step of the journey, uh, which is going from mainframe to cloud. The next iteration is going to be modernizing those applications and it's going to be much shorter time frames. Then you're getting into months, weeks, days after that. Is there any categories that you see that are more susceptible to migration? I mean, you mentioned banks. I know some banks that they swear they're never going to touch the mainframe because literally, I don't, it's just so critical that the migration has to be longer. Is there other areas, is more insurance, is obviously a big mark for in mainframes? Is there verticals that kind of like are more converting than others? Well, yes, but actually I take it back. One of the reasons is, are these applications absolutely critical? to these businesses. If they are, that's the reason why they're still running where they are. Because they're really, truly valuable. They are the business. So you make, you're taking the business into a new framework. So in that context, actually it tends to be financial services, uh, insurance as you say, but also government for example, yeah. federal governments, state and local, uh, as well as then you move into retail. And it's surprising how often as you go into some of the other verticals where some of these mainframe applications are still existing. I hate to ask a dumb question only because I don't know it, so I want to ask it. Um, and if you can say it's a dumb question if, if, if you think it is, just Dave, tell me. Are there still COBOL programmers out there? There are, to be, to be clear. Actually, COBOL's not the problem. You can train a, a new guy in COBOL in, in literally weeks. If the, they don't quit. The issue is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The actual issue is the mainframe itself. The mainframe experience about how it works yeah. uh, is getting rarer and rarer. So the key element is how can you, how can you take the new young guns and give them, give them the application and see what they can do. And this is a mechanism to do that. Great, uh, great announcement, congratulations. I was really impressed to see the mainframe there. Actually surprised to see Adam kind of focus on that, but again, in the spirit of this tradition of uh, reInvent, Jassy before uh, Adam, Andy Jassy, did the same thing with Oracle and all the other kind of big, yeah. the big legacy old guard, they called them, technologies, mainframes one. You guys are part of that, so congratulations. Just 
Final word, your take on the event so far, what's been the feedback on the announcement? Share some color commentary on what the feedback's been for you guys. Uh, we actually, since the announcement, we've had some great customer conversations. I mean, there are a lot of businesses that really do want to make this change. Yeah. We're kind of there to help them. And that's really the next step, which is what needs to happen to make this yeah. reality. I mean, I mean, Amazon may not like me saying it, but I think there's some use cases where you keep the mainframe in there and you don't Absolutely. touch it. It works there, you keep it, unless you want to move it. But if you want to move it, People sometimes want to move it faster and they get you know, this path there. Even AWS respects customer choice. The purpose is to meet the demand of the customer and if the customer chooses to stay on the mainframe, great. If they want to move off, we're there to help. Death of the mainframe, long live the mainframe. It's theCUBE coverage here in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier, love the mainframe. I used to have a 3270 terminal when I worked at IBM back in the 80s, dating myself. Well, when you Stuart need McGill, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Pleasure. Okay, CUBE coverage here in Las Vegas. The Cube, you're watching the leader in global tech event coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host, thanks for watching.